Hi guys, welcome to another Handy Quilter Sweet 16 Sunday. I'm Paula Storm and today I wanted to show you um, how I use rulers in the context of an actual quilt. So there's a few things that we're going to need today. Obviously we need the quilt. This is the quilt that I, um, I sandwiched in last week's video. Um, so if you missed how to base, how I base my quilts, um, have a look back through the Sweet 16 Sunday posts for that one. So we've got our quilt. I've got a couple of different rulers that I'm going to use. Um, these are both hand quilter rulers. Just a quick reminder, when you are ruler, using rulers, make sure you get the ones that are a full quarter inch thick. If you don't get these rulers that are thick enough, um, it'll slide underneath your hopping foot and you'll end up having a bit of an accident. So make sure you use the specialty rulers for long or mid-arm machines. I've also got this cute little um, pack here. This is the Handy Grip pack. So inside here is a heap of um, strips and they're kind of like sandpaper. They look, look and feel a bit like sandpaper but what you do is just stick them on the underside of your ruler and they'll make the, the ruler just stick to your project where, you, where you're holding it so they don't slide around. Um, so that handy grip is really, really fantastic. And the last thing I wanted to show you is the new table overlay that you can get from Handy Quilter. This is just like a new um, plastic table that slides over the top of your Sweet 16 and it makes the whole table really nice and level which makes um, using rulers just so much easier because they don't tend to hit up against the side of the, the needle. So they're the tools that I'm using today. The um, table overlay you have to or you can stick to the bed of your handy quilter so I wanted to show you quickly how you put that together. Okay, so now that we've got the um, the table overlay on, let's get started with the the quilting. So I've got my quilt, as I said, that I um, that I sandwiched the other day. I've actually gone in and I've ditch stitched all the way around this quilt. Um, I've ditched all of the blocks to give me a nice solid foundation. A lot of people like to start um, in the middle of a quilt and work their way out. Uh, I don't tend to do that, but mainly because I've already gone in and ditch stitched all the way around my quilt. So I know that that quilt is gonna be nice and secure. So today I'm actually going to start, after I've done my ditching, I'm gonna start on my, um, on my border. And I'm going to use this um, handy little tool. This is the Handy Quilter uh, Wave Ruler. This is quite a big wave. There's two different um, shapes. There's the top and, of course, the bottom. I'm going to be using the bottom edge today. And I'm going to be using that wave as a guide for some feathers. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I've got my little... Um, my little sandpaper dots on the back there, the handy grip. And so that what that does is that when I put it down on my on my quilt, it actually stays nice and securely so I don't need to use as much pressure when I'm actually quilting. The other beautiful thing about this ruler is it's got all of these fantastic guides. It's got lines going both ways through the middle and um, up and down and it's also got the needle stop um, line at the top 
and at the bottom over here. So what I'm going to use those for is for lining up my next section. What I did first of all is I laid my ruler on and I chose a spot that was about halfway through the middle of my block and I'm going to use a line at the top of the ruler here to tell me where to line up each time. So I found that that dotted line that's through the middle of the word gadgets is perfect for the middle of my quilt. Then what I need to take into consideration is that the foot has an extra quarter inch between the needle and the foot. So my stitching line is actually going to be closer to this side of the, of the middle um, if I leave it on that line. So what I'm actually going to do is shift it up just one more. And so I'm actually going to use that straight line at the bottom of the word gadget. So that's going to be where I'm going to line up across the top of the seam. And I'm also going to use that that needle stop line at the start there. So I'm going to get set up and we'll get quilting. Okay, so I've lined up my ruler. I'm, I've lined up the first seam with the needle stop button there, a line there, and then I've got my seam line across the top. So what I'm going to do is just take it section by section of the ruler. So I'm going to start with a few smaller stitches just to secure, and then I'm going to all the fabric and I'm actually I usually go a little bit slower so that I can keep everything in control and I'm just making sure that the foot is touching the ruler at all times and I'm using the handy grip on the rulers to move the fabric at the same time as I'm moving the ruler so it's actually really quite easy with the handy grip to move the quilt sandwich at the same time. So once I finish that first section this pattern will repeat. So I'm going to line up that line with my needle and I'm going to line up my line across the top again so that the pattern will repeat um, evenly. So as you can see I'm just using the, um, the ruler to help me move the fabric. I'm just trying to keep everything nice and smooth so that it's going to move evenly. By using the table overlay, I've found that I can quilt with rulers in any direction, so I don't have to just go forwards and back. Because there's a little bit of a height difference between the table and the actual machine, without the table overlay, your rulers will tend to hit the side of the machine and not go smoothly. So by having the overlay, that eliminates that whole problem. So I'm just going to line up again with my needle stop and across the top to make sure it's even all the way down. As I said before, I have actually ditch stitched this whole quilt so I know it's nice and secure and that means that I can start at any point of the quilt. So I actually haven't done anything other than the ditch stitching on the rest of the quilt but I know that it's going to be fine, it's not going to pucker up because I've done all of that ditch work um, and held the piece nice and securely. That's how I do most of my quilts. I find that if I, um, if I leave the borders until last, quite often you get that ruffling because all of the, um, the quilt here is shrunk up with all of your stitching and um, you end up with those the big wavy borders. So by ditching it, I know the whole thing's gonna be nice and secure, and then I can start wherever I like. Now, even though this pattern repeat's not going to be even, I'm not gonna worry about it because I'm just using this um, as a stem for my feathers, so it doesn't really matter where the pattern ends. So I'm just gonna take it down to the end of my block here, and then as you can see here, I've, um, I've already done this side and I'm just going to quilt some freeform feathers um, back up that stem and that's going to, um, to finish off my border. So I might do it, speed it up so you can watch me quilt that.
Okay. So now that I've finished um, up to the top, I'm going to actually come back over here and echo all the way back to the bottom because I actually prefer to do feathers from the bottom up. Um, a lot of people like working from the top down, but for me, I've found that I'm much more comfortable working from the bottom up. So I'm going to go across here, echo all the way back down to the start, and then come back up the second side. my way back up to the top. I might actually just put a glove on. These gloves are the ones I like to use. Um, you can get them at the supermarket. Um, they're just an Ansel glove for gardening, but they've got that, si um, that sticky side on the back. So I like these. I like the Machingas too, but I find them a bit hard to get sometimes. So this is the one I usually use. But I usually only wear one glove. I just find I only need one and then I can still do other things with my other hand. When I'm doing this second side, I just want to take into account that I am going to be binding this quilt. So I want to leave enough room for me to echo down this side and also leave enough room for the binding so that it doesn't cut off my feathers. So I'm just going to try and leave myself a good half to three quarters of an inch um, for the, all of that. To make my feathers uneven. I really like the more um, hand-drawn look rather than the really rigid um, look of a stencil. Um, so I don't worry about having them even on both sides. I kind of like it when they're not even. But that of course is just personal preference. If you like you can mark yourself lines um, so that you so that you can get them nice and even. going to switch gloves um, because I find that the hand that I want the glove on is the hand that I'm pulling and now that I've changed the quilt the direction of the quilt and the direction I'm quilting I'm actually going to use the other hand okay so now I've finished um, going all the way up I'm just going to once again echo all the way back down. And there we have some beautiful freeform feathers using the Handy Quilter ruler. And once again, that's the Wave B ruler from Handy Quilter to use as my stem. So I've got a really nice uniform feather all the way up my border um, just from using that, um, that wave ruler as a base. 